Taking the place of grammar care this morning. It's time for our scripture reading. And the scripture is found in the minor prophet Joel, which is just before Amos and just after Hosea. In the minor prophets old section of the Old Testament. And it's the second chapter, Joel chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 21 through 23. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And as is our custom, following reading of this word, we gather to the throne together for sharing our petitions and our praises. Who would like to share a petition or a praise? And then, I just like to thank the Lord. Uh, uh, intervene in my health situation. I was still away. It really turned out for the best. And then um, I like to pray for Eric, my roommate, and I like for his health situation. And pray for Colette with my granddaughter up in Washington State. So, um, and my, our children and the church members, I love them. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I'd like to have some prayer for uh, my cousin in heart. I'm oh, sorry, Robert Smith. Cousin Robert Smith. Thanks, Karen. You know, I'd like to have prayers for my little Sophie girl here. Oh. So we don't know if she had a seizure last night. But she rolled several times off the bed onto a box and then under the bed. So, and right now she's breathing really funny. And uh, I love her. Well, we have all sight on our refrigerator that our fur babies are children that we don't have to send to college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Joe, I want to pray for my wife. She's not here. This may be one of the worst. She doesn't feel good. She almost feels like it's moment again, but it's not. She's been testing her yet. Is it Tina? Yeah, Tina. Did you hear what I said? Give me the details again. So I want to pray for my wife. Tina, yes. She feels like she has COVID again, but she keeps testing negative. Symptoms, okay. But she doesn't have it, but the body aches and all this kind of stuff. Yes. Anyway, I want to pray for a client I talked to yesterday. She said she just found out that she has stomach cancer. Who is this? A client. Okay. Okay. Um, I read this comment that there was a virus that has similar symptoms. Because yes. I had it twice, but never tested. I know, yeah. 
Right. With seven people in the crowd. So, I would like to pray for all my neighbors. I have an ongoing interaction with my neighborhood. But this neighbor I had an hour conversation with yesterday. He has read the great controversy and the desire of ages. And he is somebody who he and his wife both were very open to spiritual things, but how to draw them into something where we might be able to spend more time talking about this. Yes. The Holy Spirit knows. Knows the path to the heart. Um, I want to interject that I, I have a friend and a colleague who stood up at our wedding nearly 40 years ago, and he's a family physician, recently retired. He, we knew each other at Hensdale, Illinois. And he, too, has adenocarcinoma in the stomach and is getting chemo and has a surgical excision plan, but the, the prognosis doesn't look excellent for him. So I pray that the God of all comfort and healing was surround him and his family. His name is Rick. Yes, what? Oh, I, my daughter, Linda, she uh, possibly could have been having her last chemo this morning. That's been four different sessions. They wanted her to have six, but now they're thinking four might be enough. We don't know, but and the main problem will be her heart failure. Yes. And also, you know, my son, who we thought was over COVID, but he keeps testing positive, even though he feels okay, and his time period is supposed to be up. He's okay. delaying being able to go away to go to work to keep holding his job open. Yeah. Okay. Great, Jeff. Charles, uh, Amy, your knees. Amy's weak. I spoke. Uh, oh. I spoke with Amy yesterday, and she feels she's she feels she's improving, but what put her in the hospital was that her blood thinning medicine had somehow prompted a bleed somewhere. They're not sure where, and she became very weak. But she's back home now. Her daughters are caring for her, rotating through caring. She can be up and around, but she's just very weak. And she still does have the pain from, from the compression fracture in the back that she got when she coughed too far. So that's maybe the steps. And she, and she doesn't want to join us in church, obviously, with COVID on the rise. So. So I have a phrase I want to add to the list. Number one, that my era, my granddaughter says he her, and she brought her mother. <laughs> and we are grateful for that visit. Not only that, uh, my uh, eldest nephew was visiting us for a few hours. Bruce Greenberg, who is a, a family physician and Barry Farmer par excellence from the Hills and hollers in West Virginia. So I think we have a lot to praise family wise today. Joe, yes, Mark. Yes, I, I, I'd like to thank God uh, for my recovery, but I'm having difficulty with the medication. I, I'd like maybe to ease the effects of the side effects. It, it's changing my personality. Sure. Um, I also wanted to say as a praise that I'm happy that Katie's here for special music. What a blessing. Yes. And I'm also yes. praise that my neighbors are here with me today. It means a lot to me. Yes. And once again, I just want to bring it up religious liberty. We can't take it for granted. Huh. Things can change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we're blessed to be here together to worship Jesus now. Oh. Susan. I'm 
faithfully that we can't be here with us today. That's a praise. Yes. I'm thankful for, I think you got that, Joe. We just cannot be grateful enough for religious liberty to be able to meet as we are today, to be able to talk with people freely. Amen. Uh, this is just a tremendous blessing. And I just want to praise God for all of us as well. It is just amazing how God unfolds his blessing day after day after yeah. day after day. His grace abounds. Grace. Amen. Yeah, we, we, Paul will put it this way. We're sin abounds. Grace abounds much more. Yeah. We need to marinate ourselves in much more. I'm grateful for Sounds from the organ. Yes. Amen. Thank you for coming and blessing us. Amen. I'm thankful that Joshua brought his dad. I'm, I'm thankful that we, our visitors from Costa Rica via Georgia are here today. Yes. I want to um, just uh, ask you to pray for the airlines about that. But, um, and the people of Ukraine. Just keep them still in our hearts. I don't want them to fade. Amen. I can't fade. They're rushing. Did they make sure I'm showing up Yes. Yeah. 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 And our addicted brothers and sisters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Laura? I forgot our school. We need to pray over our school and our roof. Yes. But there's a phrase. They had COVID at their house, but she says she's feeling better each day. So. This one more praise. Praise Rachel about the bomb threat at my school that did not occur. The bomb squad went out there and checked it out and kept finding At which school? San Rosa Junior College. Okay, there was also a bomb threat at a church in Lakeport last week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Yeah, I want to pray for the intern pastor that's coming. Yes. Yeah. 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 We'll be going to uh, camp meeting this week, family camp of the New Meadows. Yes. The family and uh, just want to pray for time with these stuff. What is the like? Special prayer with my oldest daughter. She's struggling. I'm ready to head out to a camping on her own. Well, wow. she could have somebody else. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you guys are going to have to fill in the blanks on this on this prayer list when it comes out because I'm having a hard time getting everything down. Uh, uh, <laughs> that is I've written, written things down. Just remember, this is the, the list that gets tucked in the envelope like trust. And we're going to put that envelope before the throne of grace. Yes. I was wondering for Robert, is his daughter able to travel back and forth into the United States? No. No? Okay. As, uh, as far as possible. I would invite you to kneel. My gracious and most kind Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We have come at your invitation to worship in your house and together to lend support to each of uh, our separate journeys in this life, to support our faith walk together. We have lots of things to be grateful for. Number one is that we have a great Savior who sits in all power at the throne of the universe and intercedes for us. 
Uh, we have a great Savior who loved us so much that he couldn't really value his life without our opportunity to share it. And so for his doing and dying and resurrecting and, and ascending back to the throne of grace, we, we thank you. We pray that our lives might lift him up and in a winsome way so that others could be drawn to him. Forgive us for we get detoured and distracted and uh, where we have our faith walk compromised and choked by the cares of this life. Help us to see Jesus and to have our hearts and minds transformed by his mercy and grace. Lord, you have heard a list this morning. Um, we have written it down and tucked it away in the envelope marked trust. And we know that you know each situation. And that you and your great love and providence and wisdom will apply your goodness and your mercy and your comfort and your healing to each circumstance that you live to draw us to yourself. Help us to be part of that kingdom, part of that witness. We lift up Robert and his message that you, you and he have developed together. I pray as he breaks the bread of life that our hearts will be open and receptive and that we can grow in grace because of it. We lift up uh, the news that we are going to be enjoying the journey of an interim pastor we lift up Jim Wood and his faith and love for you and may he be strengthened in his work with our church and with Middletown's church um, so forgive us where we have fallen short forgive us for our apathy and our indolence and our worldliness, and then send us your Holy Spirit and cleanse us and draw us and change us for Christ's sake so that we can be ready when he comes, lift up our hands and say, Lo, this is our God. We have been waiting for him and he will save us and he will save our families. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
I don't know if you sing in the shower, but I was singing in the shower this morning. The song came to me. We have this hope. And we love to sing that song. And I am, uh, but I just want to read these words because it, it just touched me this morning. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts. Faith in the there's my glasses. Faith in the promise of his word. We believe the time is here. Do we believe it? When the nations far and near shall wake and shout and sing, Hallelujah. Christ is King. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We are united. I was thinking about Sabbath school this morning. We are united in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are united in his love. Love for the waiting people of the world, people who need our Savior's love. Soon his heavens will open wide. Christ will come to claim his bride. All the universe will sing hallelujah. Christ is king. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Oh, doesn't say that. We have this hope, this faith, and God's great love. We are united in Christ. We can just read that. It's a song every day. We bless. This morning, we'll hear. I want to thank Susan for letting me change places with her. Put me under the gun a little bit, but God is good. And now I can go to Leone Meadows and be there next Sabbath. Thank you for that. I want to be with my children. This is my one of my struggling families that we're praying for. Just pray God will work a miracle there. So Joel 2. 21 and 23, or 22 and 23. Thank you for reading that, brother, wherever you went to. Where are you? Oh, oh I see it back right there. So I'd like to turn there again. I'm just going to use my phone. Last time I was here, we didn't have any internet. It was a little, a little complicated. Okay. So, fear not, O Lamb, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Do we need the Lord to do great things in our lives? Absolutely. I don't know about you, but I need some miracles in my life, just in my own life. And then I have my family, my extended family. Every day there's something different going on. Um, my mother in law is back from the hospital. We're thankful for that. She uh, is back to feeling better. That's nice. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures. Of the wilderness do spring, but the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. 
be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And I have a note here. It says the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God that marked its opening. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel are again to be fulfilled in the latter rain at its close. There are the times of refreshing to which the apostle Peter looked forward when he said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus. You think of Peter. What was going on with Peter when he, when Christ was on the cross? Where was Peter? Was he right up front when he was asked, Aren't you one of those? Aren't you one of his disciples? Three times he denied him, even with, sounds like with cursing. That man, as he was converted, remember Jesus, when you are converted, you know, you could probably say that to mo most of us in here. When you are converted, I know, I'll just speak for myself. We need to be converted. And when Peter was converted, I'm going to turn there to Acts, the book of Acts, because it's better to read it. Book of Acts, chapter 2. Please turn there with me. So what is I want to do? This is my sign from Austria. We Jesus Christ. We believe in Jesus Christ. I'm going to put it on my car. I don't know if know how it says. Okay, whoops. Acts 2. And we're going to go down to 36, I believe. All right. And Jesus, oh, let's start with 14, just quickly on 14. He says, it says, but Peter, this is Peter that denied Christ, now filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, they were in that room when the Holy Spirit came like clothes of fire upon them. And they started to speak in other languages. And now that there's some people believing that they're drunken, but Peter standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, I like how he lifted up his voice. You know, this is the time to lift up our voices. He lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. And then he goes on to give kind of a history of the church. And it comes down to 36, 35, it's right there. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. Okay. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, know assuredly, know this for sure, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. People whose hearts were being touched. It says, when they heard this, now, when they heard this, this crowd of people. I don't know how many were there exactly. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What a gift to have the Spirit of God in you. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Who's that? Who's afar off? That's us. That's the church today. Every, oh, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many, let's see, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from, uh, from this untoward generation. And then I like this next part. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wow. Can you imagine going down to Austin Park tonight? This is a night when the most people will ever be in Austin Park. And standing up and lifting up your voice. And by the grace of God, some will listen. And uh, who knows, maybe 3,000 will be baptized right there in the lake. We don't know what the power of God can do if we just let him. We just let him do what he can do with us. It's not us. You know, I remember when I first came to this church, I was terrified. I'm still a little terrified. To get up, I was asked to just have the morning prayer and reading scripture for Sabbath school. And for two years, I said, no. I went, I, I just didn't, I couldn't do it. All I could think of was days in the past when I, Felt like I was really not prepared for school and, you know, just was, uh, didn't do well. But God changed that. And slowly, I remember the day I said yes. I was talking to Don Schlankow, however, or however he said his name about something, and one of our sisters, Miss Carly, she asked me if I did do that for her the next week. And here I was talking to Don. And I just said, sure, okay. And the rest of the conversation with Don, I didn't hear a word he said. <laughs> All I could do was I said yes. <laughs> what are we gonna do? <laughs> God, God worked amazingly. I had a I had a class reunion that week. I was the vice president of my class. I never had to say anything at the, at the meetings because the president was always there. He was faithful as could be and he was, did a great job. And I just sat in the back. Well, that week we had to, we were to have the class reunion. Steve Ryder, my class president, called me up. He said, you know, I'm getting married in a week. I'm not going to be able to be at this class reunion. You're going to have to fill in. You're, you're the vice president. Man, I, I, got, I knew I said yes to that. Now I got this. It was a lot of prayer. Work. A lot of preparation. And God was good. God was really good. God was really amazing. Changed my whole life. So I want to go back. I'm going to read something also about this, this verse 23 of the outpouring of the Spirit. I hope I saved it on here. Let's see here. Uh -huh. It's right here. This is from Sherry Division, the early in the latter range, July, uh, July 30th. I'm not sure what year it is. But it says, there is to be in the churches a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. 
but it will not move upon those who have not humbled, humbled themselves before the Lord and open the door of their heart by confession and repentance. In the manifestation of that, that power, which lightens the earth with the glory of God, they will see only something which in their blindness they think, think dangerous, something which will arouse their fears, and they will brace themselves to resist it. Because the Lord does not work according to their expectations and ideal. They will oppose the work. Why, they say, should we not know the Spirit of God when we have been in the work so many years? You know, this can be talking about him. Very nice. Because they did not respond to the warnings, the entreaties of the messengers of God, but persistently said, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Talent, long experience, will not make men channels of light unless they place themselves under the bright beams of the sun of righteousness and are called and chosen and prepared by the endowment of the Holy Spirit. When men who handle sacred things will humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, the Lord will lift them up. He will make them men of discernment Men rich in the grace of the spirit of his spirit, their strong selfish traits of character and their stubbornness will be seen in the light shining from the light of the world. I will come unto thee quickly. I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. If you seek the Lord with all your heart, he will be found of you. And lastly, there must be no neglect of the grace represented by the former reign. Only those who are living up to the light, they, have, they will receive the, to, up to the light they have, will receive greater light. Unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, where do we find the exemplification of the active Christian virtues? In the life of Christ. We shall not recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. It may be falling on hearts all around us, but we shall not discern or receive it. That's from one of one testimonies ministers, gospel workers. So is there an urgency to this message that we have? You know, the three angels message, Revelation 14. It says, well, let's just turn it again, Revelation 14. I'm going to turn it with my phone. Okay. Sometimes I think this is faster, but sometimes it's not. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having an everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred, kindred and tongue and people. Would that include everybody we know? Would it include everybody in Clear Lake? Saying, and here it is again, with a loud voice. Peter lifted up his voice. This message comes with a loud voice. Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. 
There followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen a great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of, the wrath of her fornication. In this, these verses, I find this, this commentary. So, you know, I was working yesterday and I, you know, I want to stop before I go any further because I should have prayer before we start. I'm sorry. But let's just bow our heads. Gracious Father, this is your word. This is your message. Let me have felt it up, Lord. May it come from your spirit. Speak to us, please. And uh, may you be seen and lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. So I was working yesterday. Somebody had not done much before. Ever run a ditch witch? You know, it's an amazing tool. I'll tell you, if I had to dig this ditch that I had done with that machine, I would have probably been one yard today if I dug all over. That ground was so hard. Even the machine at one point wasn't working well. It wasn't going through it, but um, did it all in two hours. And uh, I, was, I was just very impressed. Tools, having the right tool can really save you some time and make, make things better. We have some amazing tools. God, you know, God's word, the spirit of prophecy. We have these tools to help us in this last day. You know, what, what, what is this last hour we're living in? It's the judgment hour. The books are open, and God is going through the books. And who knows how long has it been since that started? When did it start? Do we know when it started? We do know. There was a big misunderstanding, but now we understand it. Those books were open in 1844. How many years ago was that? 178 years ago. 22 years, it'll be 200 years. I don't know about you, but I have a feeling God has went through those names a long time ago. He's just watching the living right now. He's dealing with the living. And, uh, you know, he's, he's not impatient. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And, but there will become a time when the book is closed. And we don't know when that time is, but you know, I don't want that book to be closed and find that I didn't give this message to somebody that needed it. You know, somebody that I'm going to be lost. And um, so there's an urgency during this last hour, and it's been going on for some time. Last week, we're talking about God's glory, giving glory to God. To give glory to God is to reveal his character in our own and thus make his him known. And in, and in whatsoever way we make known the Father or the Son, we glorify God. I don't know if I read this last week, but we're talking about righteousness by faith. What is righteousness by faith? It is the work of laying the glory of man, my glory, your glory. Where? Sound to work. In the dust. In the dust. And doing for man what, is, what it is impossible for him to do for himself. You see, we have all these fears. We have fears of things that I can't do that. Remember Moses. He was like, I don't have a very good way of talking to people. You know, I can't speak very well. But God made him the deliverer of Israel. And he can make us the deliverer of the glory. So we're in the judgment hour. 
God made the world in six days and rested on the seventh, sanctifying this day and setting it apart from all others as holy to himself, to be observed by his people throughout their generations. God has a controversy with the churches of today. They are fulfilling the prophecy of John. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. They have divorced themselves from God by refusing to receive his son. They have not the spirit of God, God's true commandment keeping people. And the people of the world in giving their sanction to a false Sabbath and to trampling under their feet the Sabbath of the Lord have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Is the Sabbath message a, a message that we should be letting people know about? Yeah. I had a little blessing this morning. I was on my way to church. I just pulled out. My neighbor just finished their house next to us that burned down. It was the only house on our block that burned during that fire. And they were standing out in front, and I stopped and I turned on my engine and I welcomed them. I said, welcome neighbors. You know, I hope you're gonna love your home. And I guess they're just gonna be coming up on the weekends. And I said, well, we'll keep our eye on it for you. And he says, what are you, you're on your way to work? I said, no, I'm going to church. I'm the preacher. <laughs> so, kind of opening wedge, maybe. We'll see. Um, So God made them, okay, God has a controversy. I'm not going to read that part. The Sabbath question, this is the seal of God is in the Sabbath. It's in the fourth commandment. The Sabbath question will be the issue in the great conflict in which the world will act a part. The entire chapter is a revelation of what will surely take place. And it goes on. But I'm going to let you study that more yourselves. I think um, there was one more person here. Oh. Maybe it's at the end. Oh. Must be a different one. So, Let's turn to another chapter that talks about the Sabbath. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. I'd like to turn there with me. And it's funny because I, you know, I turned when I was turning to 58 earlier today. I was, um, I touched on 59. And I just want to read that because I don't know if many of us realize how important it is. We want God to hear our prayers. And it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Is that wonderful? It's not God. God can hear us. He can reach out his hand to us. But there's something that we have to make sure isn't going on in our lives. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his, voice, his face from you that he will not hear. And then it goes on about your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. And I had a, uh, I have this lady working for me, Stephanie. And um, uh, sometimes she does things that 
I just struggle with. <laughs> and sometimes I say things and I have to, you know, there are things that she needs to hear, but sometimes I'll try to say them a little wrong. Brother Daniel, he knows about that. I'm sometimes a Peter, I just blare things out. <laughs> Writing out about it. Anyway, so I find myself sometimes having to apologize. You know, there's nothing wrong with apologizing. This week I was in the lower leg. I was partly lower leg because I had to get the information to Joe, the songs and the title of the scripture. And, and I was parked there and it was already nighttime. And I come from this job that I'm trying to get this house ready where Stephanie's working. And um, so I just pulled over in Lower Lake, my old town, little market parking lot. And I was looking through the song book. That's the hardest part, is picking out the songs. And I, all of a sudden, I hear people yelling and very upset across the street outside of the bar. On the side of the bar building. And I'm kind of watching over there. And it took me a little longer to get my information to Joe because they're getting a little rough over there. The lady's standing outside the car, her husband's in the driver's seat, and she is, looks like she's kind of throwing punches on him. And all of a sudden he kind of pushes her back and she ends up on the ground. And then he gets out and I said, it's got to stop. I got to, I'm the one here seeing all this. I yelled across the road, hey, knock it off. What are you doing? You don't need to be hurting each other. Boy, they were hurt, stopped in the tracks. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she's like, he's my witness. You threw me on the ground. <laughs> Next I in the park next to me. I invited him to get out. She won't let go because he's got the keys. She is very drunk. And uh, so I, I ended up getting him in the car. I said, do you have the keys? He says, yes, I said, that's good. And uh, so we left her there and we went down the road and just watched and she went back to the bar and I took him back and he got the car. I guess he was gonna figure out later, but. I asked him if you prayed. I asked him if you knew God. And he, he's Indian. He's an Indian. But he said he did pray. I said, this is a good thing to pray. I wish I should have prayed with him. You know, you have all those afterthoughts. But, but things, the world is a horrible place. I mean, you just, you could be every single day dealing with a situation like this. And it doesn't just happen here in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, maybe you live in an area where it's a better area, but it's a different problem. Mm -hmm. You know, people have the love of money. And maybe they're not beating each other up, but they're just love of being rich and don't have time for God. So going back to 58, And this is at the end of the chapter, it talks about the fast. And this is something that we need to, we need to take a hold of what a real fast is about, you know, giving to the hungry and clothing the naked. But at the end of that, it talks about true Sabbath keeping. And it says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. That sounds like a rough task. You know, it's so easy. I made a choice last night. We got invited to dinner at our neighbors down the road. And I said, I just can't go down there. We, it won't 
the Sabbath, and we're going to go down there and get involved and all that talk. But I love the, I love the uh, the rest of this verse because it will do this. If we'll put God, lift God up, keep the Sabbath holy. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. You know, if you really keep Sabbath holy, and you put him first in everything, you know, if the conversation comes up and it's about real estate, or if it's about, you know, your car, or things that you don't need to be talking about on Sabbath, then just change the subject. Bring up Jesus. Then shalt thou, thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. What a blessing. What a blessing to keep Sabbath. He'll lift us up. Now, one part. I was really going to read on chapter 58 is the beginning. The beginning of the chapter is similar to Revelation 14. It says, cry aloud. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. You know, people are we know the verse the wages of sin is death. People are dying every day in their sin. Some people die taking many people with them. That seems to be a, a thing in our generation. Mass murder. Mass shootings, you know. And I always wonder if there was just somebody that knew that person, that knew Jesus. I, I mean, we have to have some discernment because people are struggling. People commit suicide, you know, and maybe they just needed somebody to talk to. And they're not going to go looking for you. And God is trying to send us. Send me. I love the general conference message this year. The mission message, send me. So, in reading that, I'm going to turn there. To, I like these commentaries. Is the thing still working? Here we go. Okay. All right. Isaiah 58, right? Isaiah 58. One. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show thy people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. To the servant of God <clears throat> at this time, right now, the servant of God at this time is the command addressed lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. You know what? If you see something wrong in me, tell me about it, please. You know, if I, I remember. When I was struggling with my wife in our marriage, and that went on for quite a few years, by the grace of God, I mean, we, we, we went through some fire. And uh, I remember somebody telling me, you know, it, it's probably you. <laughs> you know, that's a hard thing to accept. My wife doesn't go to church, my wife is not a Seventh day Adventist. My wife is not a vegetarian. You know? All these things I could pile up against my wife. And he says, it's my fault. I took hard. It's 
just consider it. You know? And I found that I was able to change things by realizing that. So let me go on here. Lift up that voice like the trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins so far as his opportunities extend everyone who has received the light of truth is under the same solemn and fearful responsibility as was the prophet of Israel to whom the word of the Lord came saying son of man I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel therefore Thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his ways. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way and turn from it, if he do not, if he, seems like bad English, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Turn to Matthew 3. Matthew 3, please. Talk about John the Baptist for a moment. Matthew 3. You know, I want to just quickly look at Malachi, write it back one verse, one that uh, I didn't get this turns up on my phone. That's right. Okay, Malachi 4. What does Malachi 4 say? Behold, the day cometh. The right one. That shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. This doesn't sound like a nice day. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I do this, saith the Lord of hosts. And he says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. And then this verse, behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible or dreadful day of the Lord. Elijah. You know, some people believe that Elijah is actually going to come. But who is Elijah? Elijah is referring to a message. And it's referring to the message that we have. We are the John the Baptist. We are the Elijah of this day. We are the ones to call people to repentance. You know, Confess your sins. We confess our sins. Jesus is faithful, just, you know, for people just to know that, just to know that they're forgiven and washed of all unrighteousness. What a wonderful blessing. People carry around this ball and chain of sin in their life, or their horrible lives, their addictions. You know, it's, it's a terrible thing. We're cleaning out a man's house that was a wonderful man of, of the community. And we found things that are unbelievable. 
and it's just you know it's in every every phase of life you know it's hiding there sometimes and here's what the elijah message is. it says by elijah and he shall turn the heart of the fathers any fathers here to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers as i come and smite the earth with a curse so now let's go to matthew 3. matthew 3 it's on my phone okay and this is uh by john the baptist he's a pretty mild-mannered guy right what did he wear or like some goat skins or something in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. We have some wilderness around here. You know, you get out there in the wilderness, somebody will hear you. Somebody say, there's a guy out there in the wilderness preaching about Jesus. Really? Hey, let's go check it out. Can you tell your friends? Or they tell their friends. Pretty soon you got a crowd of people. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'll have to finish up. I just realized this time was so quick. We, we started late. Like, kingdom of heaven is at hand, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John. Had his raiment of camels here, or camels here, and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. You may not want to go that far. Then went out to him Jerusalem. Then went out to him Clear Lake. It could happen. God can make things happen. And skipping down. I like this part. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruit, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children of, of Abraham. His message to these Pharisees wasn't all that kind. He loved them. He loved all of them. But he spoke in a way that would prick their hearts, that would touch them. And maybe some of those were among those 3,000. God does not send messengers to flatter the sinner. He delivers no message of peace to lull the unsanctified into fatal security. Do you get that? Fatal security. There's a lot of people living with fatal security. He lays heavy burdens upon the conscience of the wrongdoer and pierces the soul with arrows of conviction. The ministry angels present to him the fearful judgments of God to deepen the sense of need the, and prompt the cry, What must I do to be saved? Then the hand of it, then the hand that has humbled, humbled in the dust, lifts up the penitent. The voice that has rebuked sin and put to shame pride and ambition inquires with tenderest sympathy. What wilt thou do? What wilt thou that I do unto thee? Remember Mary Magdalena? Wow, one of the great stories. During that GC meeting session, there was a lady that preached about Mary Magdalena. It's probably one of the best sermons I heard on, on that. I'm out of time, but I'm going to just turn to Acts 2.44. We read the rest of it, but Acts 2, 
44 through 47. Acts 2, 44 through 47. So it's almost above our Okay. Back there. 44. And all that believed, you think of these 3,000 that were baptized, and all that believed were together. I'm going to go back to 42. I think that's starting to endure. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Think of what we're doing in our lives. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And, and the Lord added to his church daily, such as should be saved. That is my prayer for clear life. Added to his church daily. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every week we have baptiz baptisms? You know, people just filling up the pews. I am. Um, I have a burden, and um, we need to we need to start doing something here. Somebody mentioned our doors are always locked. You know, our phone. I don't even know if anybody ever answers the phone or the messages. I don't even know if it takes messages. Just put messages, Joe. Yeah. Maybe we could have that have a little committee or something, a little group that would take the phone calls every day. You know, you can switch it from one to the next. There's a way to do that. They can ring to me or they can ring to you, or, you know, and you can take those calls as they come in. We, we send out these great conferences, but nobody knows where to go or, you know, how to respond to those things, to those books, or what they've read. We have a community service where we had some wonderful offer our, our donations from Joe and some of the friends and family, and uh, I've been able to give out quite a few things, but I think we need to start opening up on Tuesdays again. We can have literature. In fact, if you're interested, please talk to me, because I, I would really like to open up from 9 to 12. And, uh, you know, we can have literature there, and people are going to come. And we just give these clothes away, and a lot of them are nice clothes. But on top of that, I like where it said they were going door to door breaking bread. Why are we going door to door breaking bread? Opening the word of God with people. I love that Susan prays for her neighbors. You know, we all have neighbors. A lot of my neighbors are Christians. A lot of my neighbors got that big, great controversy. So we have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. Let's make it real. Please uh, stand with me as we have our final hope, our closing song, and, uh, which is 207.
when we leave here, Lord, leave with us. Walk with us. May we walk with you. May we, like those two disciples, walk into a mess. May we walk with you and may our hearts burn within us as you speak to us, as we talk to you in prayer, meditation, Lord, just lift us up and make us into the people you want us to be. Bring this church on this hill. Make us a light unto this community. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.